Yu-Gi-Oh! has a bit of a money problem and not in the obvious way that you may think. So let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most Avery LR32 here and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain over that subscribe button so we can climb even further beyond the 1K ladder inching ever closer to 1,100 subscribers. So, I really do appreciate all the support. Hope you're having a wonderful day, as I always like to say. So, I want to talk about money problems in Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, for those of you who don't keep up with the American stock market, I know I have a lot of European viewers, so I'm not familiar with the European stock market. Um, so, I'm sorry if I sound like an idiot if I happen to bring that up in this video. I don't write scripts for my videos usually, unless it's like a retrospective. <laughs> um, so, in the American stock market, the American economy, it's going down the toilet. Someone just flushed the toilet full of Power Ranger action figures and now it's overflowing and it's we're going into a recession. Like all of the facts and figures say that we're going towards a recession. And I got to thinking about money issues in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because of the fact that uh, a good friend of mine, he actually reached out to me today and was like, hey man, can I have some money to get gas in my car? Like, you know, I'm working this whole week. I need gas money to get there. I told him, I'm like, look, I don't have any extra money. And I'm one of those people that like, if I can give you the shirt off my back because you need it, I will. If I have extra money to give you, I will. Um, but times are really rough for a lot of people right now, specifically in America. I don't know what it's like for y'all in Europe and other parts of the world, but the American economy kind of sucks right now. Inflation is very high and a recession is bound to happen sooner or later. And a couple other people in my life have like been asking me for money. I don't want to call them like bumming because it's like they're my friends. It's not like that they're just trying to rip me off. But it's like several of my friends have been asking me for money because so many people are on hard times. Not that I'm not and not that I am. It's just, you know, everybody has a different financial situation. And it kind of opened up my eyes to Yu-Gi-Oh! in the sense of things, at least in the money department, are kind of okay right now, but they're not going to get much easier. And I say that because as we move into Photon Hypernova, for those of you who have been living under Patrick Starr's rock, <laughs> um, you know, Cash Tira is most likely going to be a tier one deck depending on what happens on a new ban list. And it's kind of makes me wonder if that's the reason why we've been seeing a lot of rogue decks top lately. You know, obviously, whenever you're in a tier zero format, you design your deck to beat the tier zero deck, right? But it could also be because of the fact that people just don't want to pay hundreds of dollars to play the best deck in the room. You know, tier, debatably, is not super expensive. Like, you're looking at, what, I think $30 on field spells. So, yeah, that's like $90, $95. Bucks. Some other things here and there, plus the extra inside. So, maybe you're looking at, like, three to 450 maybe 500 if you're really pushing it, $500 max to play the best deck in the room before it gets destroyed on, on the next ban list in, like, less than a month. <laughs> And to a lot of people, 500 bucks is a lot. Like I remember, you know, even with just core sets, you know, just opening cases. If in case y'all didn't see my Power of the Elements uh, case opening live stream that I did when the set first came out, I spent $1,097 and a quarter <laughs> for my case. Now, did I pay out the ass and like, way over like MSRP? Yes. And I'm not going to deny that. Did we open a cracked case? Yes, we did. <laughs> we pulled one of the primeval tier field spell when they were like 60 to 70 on release. We pulled three sprite blues. We pulled three ultimate slayer, one of which was a starlight. The starlights were 600 a piece at launch or at release. Excuse me. It's not like I'm a video game developer at launch or whatever, or like I'm in the gaming community. Anyway, um, and the core sets for Power of the Elements on like TCG Player and stuff, the first edition before they brought out the second run with the unlimited printings, were like $80 to $85 for one box. You know, I picked up my Photon Hypernova case for $750 on the secondary market for a case at $750. So if I pull cracked, I'm most likely going to be able to make a profit. I was honestly lucky to only really lose about $100 on my Power of the Elements case. And like, I easily could have lost my ass, ladies and gentlemen, very easily could have lost my ass. I'm glad that I sold my Ultimate Slayer Starlight when I did for a couple hundred dollars because those tanked hard after release. And it really, it makes me wonder 
uh, like how people can stick with playing Yu-Gi-Oh in the IRL sense without like going to master shits, which you shouldn't. You should just be playing an unofficial simulator. But it makes me wonder how people can stick with that, especially in today's economy, for lack of a better term, that, you know, people are paying, let's say, 100 to 150 bucks to play a rogue deck to hopefully see some success. And yet they're getting dunked on just because the other decks in the room are strictly better. And it goes to show why we need a ban list more than ever right now, sooner rather than later, to add some freshness to the game, to inject some freshness, if you will. Because right now, the game is just so damn stale. No one wants to play right now. I'm occasionally playing Cash Tira on EDO Pro just to play test it. But like, I feel like my build is pretty much set in stone. I'm just waiting for my case to arrive to my front door. And it's a damn shame that Yu-Gi-Oh! is not cheaper. Like right now, it's cheap, somewhat, depending on who you ask. Because we're expecting a ban list any day. You know, we're expecting excuse me, tier to get destroyed. We're expecting Sprite to get hit in some way, Flunder to get hit in some way. So you can build a meta deck for somewhat of a decent value, but like if you want stuff of higher rarity, you're paying out the ass. Now, higher rarity is always gonna cost more, I understand that, but I feel like more than ever, especially with the things that we have coming up down the line, like Photon Hypernova, Cyberstorm Access, which the more I look at it, the more it just seems like a really good set. Like I would say like a little bit better than Darkwing Blast level is good. And the game is just going to keep on getting more and more expensive and more and more broken cards are going to come out to where like players are going to eventually say like, I'm, I'm just going to dip out for a little bit. And like, I feel that that could hurt attendance down the line to, you know, it may not even be a month from now where the attendance gets hurt at like big events, but maybe like six months down the road when whatever the next best deck is. And like, I'm not here to say like, oh, Yu-Gi-Oh is dying and things like that. These things come and go. There's going to be budget options in some form or fashion, whether you're just forced to play Dark World and have a terrible matchup against anything that vanishes or play like, I don't know, Cyber Dragons when nobody is playing Cyber Dragons, you know, it's not to say that you can't see success on a budget, because you can. When I played 60-card Brandon Elvich and came in, what was it, 18th place at that Boca Raton Regional? You could argue that that was budget. I mean, it was 60 cards, it was a pile, but it was basically just three Albaz structure decks, an Eldritch core, some Mystic Mind cores with like three Mystic Mind, three Demise of the Land, stuff like that, and like 12 Floodgates, and that was the deck. And the side deck, I think, wasn't even that expensive, so I built it for like 200 bucks and I got my invite, like that's not bad at all. But does that always happen? No, it doesn't. And I think that it could really become a problem with the worse that the real life economy gets and things like that. And I want players to be able to have a good time in this game, whether you're casual or competitive. That's why I bitch and complain about like not buying the Dark World structure deck or not buying Amazing Defenders because if you're a casual player or you're competitive and you see something that you think is good when really it's not, why are you going to waste your money on that when alternatively, by saving your money, because Yu-Gi-Oh! can get expensive, by saving your money and say, I'm going to put this aside to get a case of Photon Hypernova, or I'm going to put this aside to get my Cash Tira Core, or alternatively, buying things early like Cash Tira Unicorns are like $30 now. What did your boy do? I got mine at 13 a piece. I was supposed to get three in the mail at 13 a piece and one didn't show up. I'm fucking pissed. <laughs> so there are alternatives like that to getting things early. But the people that, you know, are paycheck to paycheck that can't get cards early, you know, depending on the, the price of them at the time, it's like those people are damned if they do, damned if they don't. So anyway, I just thought that this would be an interesting video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Is there something that you do to make Yu-Gi-Oh! -Yu affordable to you? I know me personally, I usually just buy stuff in advance if I know it's a deck that I want to play. And I've gotten to the point now where I don't even really have that much of Yu-Gi-Oh! collection anymore. I used to have thousands of cards and I made like two to three grand selling all my cards for the most part, minus some things that I held on to. And I just buy whatever best deck I want to play and then sell it later. If you remember years ago, for those of y'all who were veterans on this channel, you remember I spent $700 on a Zodiac core and I like scrubbed out, went X3 to regional. And then of course I get my invite beating Zodiac all day with fucking Trickstar when that first came out. <laughs> so I've lost my ass on some investments myself. I've been lucky that I've had a nice nest egg over time that I've invested in stock markets and things like that to where I don't really have to worry about that. Even, you know, with my cancer treatment, that's kind of hurt my bottom line, but 
that's besides the point. Point is I'm getting treatment and we're still healthy. Guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.